Anyway, let's get to the wrestling match on the program. Um, FTR wrestled the Varsity Blondes, Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. Brian Pillman's not blonde anymore. Brian Pillman's hair is dark. Why are they the Varsity Blondes? Well, because, you see, Tony Khan was a fan of the Varsity Club. And Tony Khan was a fan of the Hollywood Blondes. And Brian Pillman Jr.'s dad was in the Hollywood Blondes for five months or whatever it was. So you combine all those things, all those forces together, and although both guys, their hair is more brown than blonde, they are the Varsity Blondes. Well, they ought to be the Varsity Browns. Or as Bobby Eaton said one time about him and Orville Hutto when they got started out as a tag team when they were both 16 years old, they should have worn yellow tights and brown boots and called them the drizzling shits. Anyway, (laughs) it was 30 minutes into this program before anybody who is actually a professionally trained wrestler was in action when this match started. And FTR immediately... It's not even like looking at the same, at guys doing the same endeavor. They pick up the in-ring level of performance through the roof just because of their professionalism and that they're actually trained and they know what they're doing. And they had a good tag match with these guys. They started heat on Pillman to go to the break, come back, still getting the heat on Pillman. Tully gets a cheap shot. First time I've actually seen a manager just interfere in a match because he could. There was uh, uh, definite baby faces and heels to this match. FTR led it, and that's best. It's best I've seen Brian look. Uh, I haven't seen Griff at all, but he looked good. So, but they the FTR led it well. They rushed the hot tag, or Brian rushed the hot tag. As soon as he got the chance, he just scampered over there. He could have gone to the neutral corner and let the other guy check, but whatever. They got a rush. Um. Old Griff had a nice comeback. FTR fed it perfectly. At one point, Brian tagged Griff's ass as Griff was going through the ropes. I'm not sure about that, but Dax hit a real nice brain buster. And then they hit their finish. Boom, one, two, three. A good match and a good win. And the underneath baby faces looked more competent for for the effort than when they go out there and have one of these goofy, stupid, flippy matches with guys that don't know what they're doing. So the guys that did the job came out better. And FTR, this is what they or anyone else in the over one year history of this program now should have had on their debuts and on their builds. Good, solid, exciting wins against guys that they're better than. So that you get the idea that these are the stars and they are winners. But this company brings everybody in with no fucking build whatsoever beats them and then starts fucking after they beat them in main events then they start putting them in preliminary matches to get over what did you think about the FTR match I thought it was good it was nice to see them back on TV I don't think we've seen them have a match since they lost the belts Uh, I know you brought up Tully at ringside I was thinking during this match can you imagine if Jim had actually managed these guys the managers here do nothing you know, Tully did an interview where he said, you know, talking about them losing the belts, well, I wasn't there at ringside. I'm like, yeah, well, whenever you are, you don't do anything anyway. Yeah, exactly. But uh, good to see them on TV. And it's not his fault. No. Nobody's telling him not to do anything. If, if people are either telling him don't do anything or not telling him do something, what the fuck? I'd go to sleep out there. But I thought it was a good match. Um, first time I've seen Varsity Blondes as a team. Cool that they had matching trunks already i like that in a tag team it's one of the minor reasons why i always liked stan lane and bobby a little better than dennis and bobby well we made a little more money by then too but you know i mean this goes into the whole idea that i wish these guys had a place they could work where it was more than once or twice a week yeah or or in, in AEW's case i guess it's technically if you're working both nights it's twice in two weeks because we really don't know i mean i know there was one spot where brian pillman got like dropped on his head or his neck and it looked a little stiff. But um, I can't speak too much about it. They, they did fine. FTR was great. Really happy to see them back on the show and hope they do something good with them. Well, you can hope in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up first. Um, <laughs> Officer Bar Brady was in, in a bar with Adam Page. And as he starts talking, two of the goofy dork order jobbers stand up from behind the bar like he wouldn't have known that they were there. And they made a joke about it. How long you been there? About 10 minutes. 
And they offered no, no, no. I thought they said partners. seven days. I, I, well, I thought it's it's all about ten minutes or whatever. I don't fucking know. But nevertheless, is a fucking pages in a bar. These two goofs stand up. He's not supposed to have known they were there. They're going to be his partners. And, well, maybe just once. What the fuck? Alex now, Marvez is incapable of saying anything that doesn't sound fake. Well, because he has. It, he doesn't he's a nice human being he doesn't need to be anywhere near television except to watch it he's not an on-camera personality he never has been and now he's memorizing these things to say and he recites them like he's memorized them like it's a second language to him and he doesn't know the meaning behind it he's just fucking saying these sounds because that's what somebody sounds like when they're they shouldn't be on tv they're not good at it and they're not comfortable but that would be another thing they would have to admit that they've made a massive mistake on. So they won't, they would, they just keep putting him out there, making him look stupid. And speaking of things that they just will not admit that they've made a drastic error on and just stop it. The dork order. The next match was Dustin versus 10, a masked guy with the Roman numerals for 10 written on his chest in Sharpie. This is national fucking television. And I'm not, I love Dustin Rhodes. He's one of the best workers in the company. I'm not watching 10. So I fast forwarded it and Dustin won with a bulldog. And then because they can't leave anything alone, here comes Pizzeria Uno with the rest of the dork order jobbers and Colt. Colt's the only one you could recognize even if he wasn't wearing a mask. All the rest of them look like miscellaneous dipshits that work at Shaggy's Pizza. With Uno being the fucking daytime manager. Not even the nighttime when he gets real busy. Just the daytime. Why are they still doing this stupid, 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 stupid thing? Brody Lee has disappeared apparently out of embarrassment. He (laughs) dumbed himself out of the business or he stunk out the joint. I don't know where he's gone. Possibly he's in the mob. They've had to relocate him. Just quit this thing now. Why? And they want Dustin to be seven. Wasn't that his name in WCW? I think they may have done that, didn't they? They did do something like that. Well, it doesn't matter. It was awful. It was awful then. It is awful now. This was so outlaw bad. And then Dustin slaps fucking Uno, but then he wouldn't let him jump Dustin. And then there's Colt Cabana standing back there in the back of it, collecting a check, smiling like, this is the easiest I ever, gig I ever had. Do nothing. Get paid. You know, we brought up the fact earlier that after every single match, something happened. We almost forgot one. FTR win their match, and all of a sudden they're going at it with Marco Stunt at ringside. Oh, actually, I'd already, I'd already skipped ahead. When they were doing their, we got our hands up in the air and strutting. I was trying to skip ahead to see if I could get this over with quicker. So I didn't even. It, it's every what, match. Though. What, every would, match. what would what would somebody do? What would any of them do? What would old dwarf dwarf dong sucker do if he got his little banny rooster ass up in somebody's face and they just picked him up over their shoulder and just walked off with him? Against his will. <laughs> what would he do? Not even beat him up, just walk off with Not him. Not even beat him, just walk off with him. And he'd be <laughs> wailing on him. And then, what is he going to do? That's funny. It's a grown man just carrying him away. I think they should do that. 